Hi! In an earlier video, I finally filled the yellow gap between green and red laser light with three new lasers. A dream come true. Though I had to realize none of them are true yellow. To my eyes, they are either yellow-green, mostly green, or amber-yellow, mostly orange. In this video, I will test another laser that is set to deliver yellow laser light. Oh really? Time to test its wavelength, power output, and if you and I see it as true yellow. I will even attempt to figure out its inner secrets from its output. When experimenting with a laser, wear safety glasses suitable for its wavelength and power output. While I technically have shown some lasers in the yellow gap between red and green, I don't feel like I have the yellow gap filled yet. More like I have narrowed down the yellow gap to be between yellow green and amber. But maybe my wait for a yellow laser is finally over after collecting for more than 25 years. This laser should emit light at 573 nanometers, right between my lasers closest to yellow. So it should be yellow, right? Let's not wait any longer. Is this really the holy grail of unobtainable laser colors? Oh, I don't think this looks yellow to you. Not to me either, on the video recording. Seeing it in real life Here's my initial reaction from the unboxing video on Patreon. That's yellow. That's freaking yellow. You might think I've lost my mind or vision. However, the reality is, this laser hits such a unique wavelength color that most people live their whole life without seeing it single out. Not even the color scientists at Sony, since my camera does not record the laser's color right at all. Not that I blame them. Remember, cameras only record red, green and blue to match the colors your RGB screen can display. Yellow is not recorded as yellow. It is recorded and displayed as a mixture of green and red, tricking our eyes into thinking the screen emits yellow wavelengths. Cameras and screens have a yellow gap too. I would like to show you the true color of this laser and test if you would call it yellow. In the following clip, I will display different colors turning from yellow green to orange and their number. I want you to note at which color number the screen looks the most yellow to you. Afterwards, I will reveal which number matches the laser's color the best. Get ready to note the number of the most yellow color. Three, two, one, go. All right, comment with the number appearing the most yellow to your eyes on your screen. The number matching the laser's color the best to my eyes on my screen is number 12. I don't know about you, but this counts as yellow yellow to my eyes, especially compared to the colors of my other lasers in the yellow gap. Awesome! But um, hold on! Is it pure yellow at 573 nanometers, or did they just mix some red and green laser beams to make the laser appear yellow? Like a show laser does. Time to test the laser with something more precise than my eyes. A spectrometer. Nice. No green or red light here. The spectrometer confirms it is a pure yellow around 572-573 nanometers. I should mention that the Bezold Brücke shift might trick my eyes into seeing the intense laser light as yellower than it is. At low intensity, 
reflected off of a black matte surface at an angle away from me, I do see a slight green tint in the yellow. A color closer to number 10 or so. But even this looks yellow to me. At higher intensities, on a white diffuse surface at a distance, it is just the purest, most intense yellow I have ever witnessed. As usual with any laser, and fireworks for that matter, a video recording doesn't do it justice. Wish I could show you this laser light in real life, but the least I can do is color correct the recordings to match reality. You will have to imagine the intensity of the yellow light for yourself. Speaking of intensity, how strong is this unlabeled laser? With the laser power meter set to 573 nanometers, let's test the output power. Not the most stable output, but after heating up for 5 minutes, I'd say it averages around 20 milliwatts, with peaks up to 25 milliwatts. More than strong enough to be an eye hazard at specular reflections or direct hits, but thankfully low enough to be experienced safely under the right controlled conditions. Now I know in great detail how my yellow green and golden yellow lasers work, but how did they manage to make this one lace a true yellow? the unobtainable laser color. I will attempt to figure it out after a short message. A big, big thanks to all my patrons. Your help with getting the laser power meter and spectrometer makes videos like this one possible. For just a dollar a month, you can help me out too and get full access to all my posts on patreon.com. Link to my Patreon page in the description. Thank you. How does it work? There are surely some trade secrets involved in this new, unique laser technology. But when asked, Tinker Lasers told me it is a DPSS laser using self-frequency doubling. Great! Tells me quite a lot. Using this information, I search online for research papers on such a laser. And sure enough, I found one. I find this solution particularly interesting because it starts out exactly like a common green laser pointer, making the first steps dirt cheap and easily available. If this is how they made it, I see two ways of trying to verify it on the output. First off, the pulsing, which would be unusual on a laser in this form factor, may be visible if filmed in the right way. Let me turn on the laser while filmed at a thousand frames per second. Whoa, the startup has some crazy mode hopping, like some alien trying to phone home in Morse code. Though after less than a third of a second, it stabilizes at TEM01 with the beam split into by a dark line. Annoying if you are laser purist that enjoy the beauty of a circular Gaussian distributed beam. But in reality, I only notice this split dot if I watch it at an unsafe close distance. I looked for a pulsed dotted laser dot in several recordings. I just don't see any signs of it. But then again, the one from the scientific paper is pulsed around 20,000 times a second. So I need to film at well over 20,000 frames per second to be sure. I don't have anything that can film that fast. I asked the seller since a pulsed laser is also a safety concern. The peak power in a pulsed laser is much higher than the average power suggests. Tinker assured me that this is a continuous wave laser, not a pulse laser. That's a good thing. Except it doesn't match with my guess. Mm, okay. Laser scientists seem to be competing to make the most efficient laser. So maybe the Q-switching isn't necessary after all, if low output and low efficiency is acceptable. Second opportunity is to look for infrared leakage from the pump diode and neodymium dope yeah crystal. There was no noticeable infrared light from them in the wavelengths test. The laser must have a decent infrared filter inside it. But even the best infrared filters 
that aren't opaque to yellow light as well will let a tiny amount of infrared pass. If I add another filter, which lowers the yellow but let infrared pass, I might find some weak infrared light in the output. Aha, gotcha. Despite the filtering, there is a little infrared escaping, revealing the inner workings. But it is not at 808 or 1064 nanometers as I expected. It is around 895 nanometers. That's odd and a first for me. I don't have any other laser with such a pumped laser diode. A new wavelength for me on its own. And proof that I am totally wrong about this path to yellow. This seems to use cutting edge, undocumented laser technology. Makes me almost ache of curiosity about how this works. Comment if you know of possible paths to 573 nanometers laser light. On the other hand, I guess it is only fitting to let this holy grail of lasers keep some of its mystery. Well, there we have it. After collecting lasers for 25 plus years and making videos on YouTube for 15 of them, I finally have a true yellow yellow laser. Nothing short of a dream come true for me. Feel free to click like to celebrate with me and make sure you are still subscribed for my future videos. A true blue blue 473 nanometers laser must be the new goal. Stay tuned for my next video which will feature plasma balls. I already have a video you can go watch on how they react to an extreme magnet. In any case, thanks for watching. Bye for now.